Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the channel. And today, I'm going to go my review of WrestleMania 9. Starting off the evening, we go to our first match of the night. It is for the WWE Intercontinental Championship. It is Tantaka versus Shawn Michaels. I thought it was an okay opening matchup for WrestleMania 9. Back and forth matchup between Tantaka and Shawn Michaels with Tantaka keeping the pace of the match. Tantaka ends up hitting a devastating power slam on Shawn Michaels. Referee then sounds for the bell. And your winner of the match by count out is Tantaka. A couple things I want to say about this matchup quickly, man. Number one, it was an okay opening matchup for WrestleMania 9. The finish, I had no idea how they did the finish for this matchup because both Sean and Tantaka were in the middle of the ring. Referee sounds for the bell and he has Tantaka win by count out. Even though both Tantaka and Shawn Michaels are in the ring. I have no idea why they had that as the finish. Made no sense whatsoever, but... Hats off to Tantaka for getting the win in that matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is a tag team matchup. It is the Head Shrinkers versus the Steiner Brothers. I thought it was a good match. Back and forth matchup between both teams with the Head Shrinkers keeping the pace of the match. But Scott Steiner ultimately hits his signature Frankensteiner on the Head Shrinkers. Pins for the three. And your winner, winners of the match are the Steiner Brothers. Hats off to the Steiner Brothers for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night as well. It is Doink versus Crush. I thought it was a good match. Back and forth matchup between both Doink and Crush. With Crush keeping the pace of the match. Doink hits a power driver on Crush in the middle of the ring. But Crush gets up, hits a power slam on Doink. Crush then hits a press slam on Doink in the middle of the ring. Crush also applies his finish on Doink. Doink then breaks the hold. Referee then is taken out. Doink then applies the finish on Crush. Another Doink is here. Doink then, another Doink attacks Crush. And then Doink goes for the cover. Pins for the three. And your winner of the match is Doink. Hats off to Doink for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night as well. It is Razor Ramon versus Bob Backlund. I thought it was an okay match. Back and forth match between Ramon and Backlund with Razor keeping the pace of the match. And Razor ultimately hits a roll up, pins for the three, and your winner of the match is Razor Ramon. Hats off to Razor Ramon for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night as well. It is another tag team matchup for the WWE Tag Team Championships. It is Hulk Hogan and Brutus the Barber versus Money Inc. I thought it was a good match. Back and forth matchup between both teams with Hogan and Brutus keeping the pace of the match. Ted DiBiase applies a million dollar dream on Hogan. Brutus then breaks the hold, applies a sleeper hold of his own on Ted DiBiase. Brutus then applies another sleeper hold on um, Ted DiBiase as well. Hogan then hits a boot on Ted DiBiase. Referee is taken out. Hogan and Brutus then go for the cover. Jimmy Hart then counts, to th counts for three. But a new ref is here. And gives the win to Money Incorporated by disqualification. Hats off to Money Inc. For getting the win in that matchup. And at the time retaining the WWE Tag Team Championships. Moving on from that. We go into our next match of the night as well. It is the Narcissist Lex Luger versus Mr. Perfect. Uh, one thing I'll say about this match before I get into it. Number one. I do believe the Narcissist gimmick that Lex Luger had. Was the best gimmick Luger had throughout his entire career. The Narcissist gimmick just fit really well. It was a great character. You know, Luger came off as a heel. It was just fantastic, man. I wish they never would have got rid of the Narcissist Lex Luger. And it just, you know, should have just kept it throughout his entire career. But unfortunately, it did not happen. But I do think it was one of his best gimmicks of all time. Uh, the match itself was great, man. Uh, back and forth matchup between Luger and Mr. Perfect. With Perfect keeping the face of the match. Perfect lands a devastating, uh, lands devastating chops on Lex Luger in the middle of the ring. Lex then hits a power slam on Mr. Perfect. And then Lex hits a roll up using the ropes on Mr. Perfect. Pins him for the three. And your winner of the match is Lex Luger. Hats off to the narcissist Lex Luger for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night as well. It is Giant Gonzalez versus The Undertaker. I thought it was an okay match. Back and forth match between both Gonzalez and The Undertaker with Undertaker keeping the pace of the match. Gonzalez then attacks Paul Bear. Gonzalez then attacks Undertaker with chloroform. It's like a rag that he put over Undertaker's face. Uh, Undertaker is knocked out from that. Referees are calling for a stretcher. Gonzalez then attacks one of the referees in the ring. 
Undertaker gets carted off, and then Undertaker's entrance music hits again, or the gong, I should say. Uh, and then Undertaker returns. Undertaker then uh, pretty much attacks Gonzalez. Gonzalez ends up leaving the ring, doesn't know what's going on. And the winner of the match by disqualification is The Undertaker. A couple of things I'm going to say about this matchup quickly, man. This was one of those matches, if people actually look back on it, this was one of those matches that Undertaker honestly could have lost. You know what I mean? Technically, yes, he won by disqualification. But the referee really didn't see it. And then Undertaker got carted off to the back. Like I said, his you know his music went you know started playing the infamous gong, you know the bell, um, that sounded off, and then Undertaker comes back down to the ring, and uh, tries to attack Gonzalez. Gonzalez is completely confused of what's going on, and then just leaves the match, and then have Undertaker just win by disqualification. Gonzalez could have totally won that match if they didn't know what was going on or knew the finish of the match. Could have totally knew what was going on. I mean, he could have honestly lost his first WrestleMania match. We. we would have never got a streak ever for WrestleMania for uh, with the Undertaker. So, the match itself I think was very sloppy on how they booked the matchup. Um, and all in all, and I've, st I've stated this in the past too, Giants and professional wrestling do not last long. I mean, Andre the Giants not included in that category, even though he is a giant. But a lot of Giants and professional wrestling do not last long. Man, they have a very low ceiling in professional wrestling. And Giant Gonzalez is the pure, one of the pure definitions of that. He didn't really have you know. A hell of a career after he fought the Undertaker. He kind of just went off and did his own thing. And if I'm not mistaken, Giant Gonzalez is also known as El Gigante, who wrestled in WCW for a very small stint in WCW. He wasn't there for a long time. I think he was a part of the Wrestle War or War Games for WCW, uh, and that was it. So I mean, that just shows you how long or you know the Giants last in professional wrestling. There's no longevity for these guys in professional wrestling. Like, yeah, there is the Big Show. Yes, I understand that, and there is the Giant. But as far as other, you know, Giant men in professional wrestling the size of a Big Show or Andre the Giant, they just don't last long, man. They just don't. You know, and it's a shame. It really is. But hats off to The Undertaker for getting the win in that matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our main event of WrestleMania 9. It is Bret Hart versus Yokozuna for the WWE Championship. I thought it was a really heavily good match. Back and forth matchup between Yokozuna and Bret Hart with Yokozuna keeping the pace of the match. Yokozuna then hits a devastating leg drop on Bret Hart in the middle of the ring. Hart then uh, gets up, sends Yokozuna into the exposed turnbuckle. Then Bret Hart ends, ends up applying a sharpshooter, but Mr. Fuji throws Saw into Hart's face. Blinds Bret Hart. Bret Hart then falls to the mat. Yokozuna then goes for the cover. Pins for the three. And your winner of the match, and at that time, new WWE champion is Yokozuna. After that, Hulk Hogan is here. Mr. Fuji throws out an open challenge to Hulk Hogan to challenge Yokozuna for the WWE Championship. Bret Hart is pretty much telling Hulk Hogan to go ahead and accept the challenge. Hogan accepts the challenge. Fuji then goes to throw salt at Hulk Hogan. Missed. Hulk Hogan ends up hitting Yokozuna with the salt. And then Hogan hits a signature leg drop on Yokozuna. Pins him for the three. And your winner of the match and new WWE Champion is Hulk Hogan. A couple of things I'm going to say about this main event, man, quickly before I get out of here. Number one, this was a good match, man. Yokozuna, severely underrated. I'm a big Yokozuna fan, and he was severely underrated in professional wrestling. One of the best big men in professional wrestling. Uh, Bret Hart, I mean, what more can you say about Bret Hart, man? He's the best as ever was, the best there ever will be, is Bret Hart. Fantastic wrestler, fantastic athlete. And it uh, just makes for a hell of a match and a great story. The one part about this match I did not like was Hulk Hogan. I, did, I didn't think there was a reason for Hogan, any reason for Hogan to be out in this match. There was no reason for it. He just had a match with Brutus, the barber, against Ted DiBiase and IRS for the WWE Tag Team Championships. They lost. And then you have Hogan show up at the main event, then to challenge Yokozuna and beat Yokozuna in under like five seconds. It's ridiculous. And obviously, yes, the company is pushing Hulk Hogan at the time, but Hulk Hogan was pretty much on his way out after WrestleMania 9. I mean, he was on his way to WCW. I mean, obviously, the fans didn't know it at the time, but he was on his way out. So, I don't even know, if I'm not mistaken, I don't even think he really defended that championship, if I'm not mistaken. But I just don't think there was a need for Hogan to be in this main event. The main event itself between Yokozuna and Bret Hart was just absolutely awesome. It was a classic. And to be honest with you, the best match on this card besides maybe Lex Luger and Mr. Perfect. That was it. Those two matches alone 
were the two best matches of WrestleMania 9, hands down. And speaking of that, as far as giving WrestleMania 9 a rating from 1 out of 10, I'm going to give it a solid 5, man, at best. Maybe 5.5, because a lot of matches on here I honestly could have done without, and again, I don't know why they booked some of these matches. The opening matchup for WrestleMania 9, and I went on a little tangent about this, Tantaka versus Shawn Michaels. Both really good wrestlers. Shawn Michaels is probably one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. And I was a big fan of the Intercontinental Championship as well when I was, you know, growing up and watching professional wrestling. But the finish of this match, there was, I don't understand it. You had Shawn Michaels and you had Tantaka in the ring. Referee sounds for the bell and they have Tantaka win by countout. Meanwhile, both Tantaka and Shawn Michaels are in the squared circle. I don't understand it. The Head Shrinker Steiner Brothers match was a really good match. Big fan of the Steiner Brothers as well. Really good matchup. And the Head Shrinkers are a great tag team. Fantastic tag team. Doink versus Crush. Not a big fan of Doink or Crush. But I understand Doink's gimmick. You know, and I understand, and I like the fact that you don't know what you're going to get with Doink. You don't know who's going to show up. And the fans are gravitated towards Doink. Crush, I just never was a big fan of Crush. Uh, the other match, too, to be honest with you, Razor Ramon versus Bob Backlund. Big, big fan of Razor Ramon. Big fan of Razor Ramon. God rest his soul. But... Bob Backlund? No. This was pretty much a glorified squash match. I don't know why they booked Bob Backlund in this match, but I'm happy that Razor got the win. Uh, and like I had stated earlier, the two best matches on here, one of them was definitely Lex Luger versus Mr. Perfect, one of the best matches of WrestleMania 9. And obviously the main event being Yokozuna versus Bret Hart for the WWE Championship, besides having Hulk Hogan involved in the match. Those were my two top matches of WrestleMania 9, being Lex Luger versus Mr. Perfect. And Yokozuna versus Bret Hart for the WWE Championship. So, I would have to give WrestleMania 9, man, a solid 5 at best. I'm not going to sit here and say it was the worst WrestleMania of all time. But it definitely was not the best. But, this is my review of WrestleMania 9. I hope you guys are out there staying safe. Be careful and remember, stay classic. Peace.